Okay, John, um, I'm glad you made this video because I do need to qualify um, the statement that there is no I, there is no ego. Um, because, you know, that's the thing with language, the meaning of the words that we use depends on the context within which they are used. Uh, that context varies in relation to, you know, our audience, who we are talking to. Uh, or not our audience, but, you know, the people we're in dialogue with. It's not just that I'm up here speaking and you're listening. No, you respond, uh, you know, we throw ideas back and forth, and through this continual transaction come to know each other's, under, you know, uh, state of mind. Um, so, what I'm saying is not so much that there is no ego, there is no experience of personal consciousness and volition. Um, I'm not trying to say uh, either that there that there is no um, world. Uh, what I'm saying is that something else is primary, something comes first, and then these notion, notions of subjectivity and objectivity, or ego and reality, uh, arise afterwards as we adopt um, a certain cultural understanding. Um, so what's primary is intersubjectivity, which is the, the in-between, uh, as I said in my other video, the in-between uh, ego and world, or what is in-between ego and world. Um, we arise out of something which was already uh, existing as a relationship between many events and labeling some particular event as, you know, that event and another particular event as this event and saying uh, certain things about one event, this one, that don't apply to another event, that one, is always a relative enterprise because ultimately all events are related to, to every other event and there are no separate events there are just occasions and each occasion is subtly related to everything I mean in David Bohm's terms you know the implicate order uh, is completely interconnected um, so under the surface under the explicit reality of apparently separate bodies there is a unity and I think that unity comes first. It's primary, though it's not as though this is like a ground that we can rest everything else on. It's completely groundless. It's, con it's, it's not a substance of some kind. It's not in one place, a finished product, a creation. Uh, it's an ongoing creative enterprise that you and I and everybody else, uh, every being, every organism, um, that exists is, is participating in the creation of this in-between space out of which arise what I call and you call uh, my sense of personal private uh, experience that me I am a sort of bifurcation or uh, maybe diffraction is a better word, a splitting of, of the beam which originally was one into these two apparently separate qualities, the ego and, and the world, the subject and the object. Um, but they're only apparently separate, and so the fact that they are appearances is what makes me say they don't exist. Um, let's be clear though that I was not saying we have no free will. I think that word free will because it's always throughout history been related to the other word determinism and so in a sense derives its meaning from that word determinism it's a troublesome word and free will needs a lot of unpacking because if the ego is this secondary thing which relies uh, which arises out of um, something more primary our shared experience with each other then somehow free will must uh, be a co-creative enterprise, not something I have and you have, but something we have. 
Um, so I'll leave it there to avoid making this another 10 minute video. Um, hopefully I've clarified myself and uh, we understand each other a little bit better, but hit me back if uh, you still disagree or if you're not quite clear on, on what it is I'm trying to say. So thanks again for your video and I look forward to your response.